Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're gonna look at the autopilot of the ATR aircraft and see how we can use the various options. So let's go inside the aircraft and first look where we can find the autopilot. Well, it's kind of easy because you might have already discovered it yourself, but this is the autopilot. To switch on the autopilot you need to use this button, right? You can switch it on or off or you can switch it in a pause mode, also known as standby. That will temporarily suspend the autopilot, right? And then you can, I would say, manually control the, the aircraft. Uh, there is still an option to override the autopilot by, I say, making hard adjustments that will also automatically switch off the autopilot. Then, how can you use the autopilot? Well, there are a few things, right? First of all, we've got the heading mode and the nav mode. The heading mode is used to determine, okay, how, which direction does the aircraft fly to? And you can see the blue angle over here. Now if I press this or use this button, you can see that I can make changes because I want to change the direction in this direction, right? That's where the next waypoint is, so I want to fly in that direction. So let's do that. I'm gonna change it. Here we go, and in that case it will fly into this direction once we enable it. Now if you want to synchronize it, right, which means, I, hey, I want to set it to the current course, simply right click on it and then it will set it to the uh, current heading which you're flying. The other method is the nav mode, and the nav mode depends on this option, which is nav source 1, which allows you to select the different navigation radios, right, nav, uh, or you can set it to uh, V, ILS1, in case you're using ELS, uh, VILS2, and the other navigation radio. For our, I would say, tutorial, we're gonna only use this one, which is set to NAV1, right? Which is the active navigation radio, uh, which automatically being set by the uh, co pilot in this case. What this function has different compared to this one is that this one you need to continuously change it, while this one, if you arrive at one waypoint and you will need to fly to the next one, it will automatically make that uh, change. Really cool. Then there are the app and the BC button. The app stands for approach mode, which follows the glide path in case ILS is available and then will make sure that you will go down, right? Following the glide path, decreasing altitude and then at the final point you can uh, switch off the autopilot and do the landing yourself. The back course mode is something I only theoretically read and have not used yet in Flight Simulator, but based on what I understood is that if there is no beacon available on the runway which you want to land for ILS, but there is on the opposite side, you can use the back course mode and then it kind of inverts the, uh, I would say, the channel and will make sure that you can still use the glide path. But correct me if I'm wrong. Then there's the uh, options, of course, to keep on a certain altitude of, or to fly to a certain altitude. In that case, we can use the altitude hold mode, which will simply keep the aircraft on a specific altitude. We also, it's also known as the altitude select mode. And you can change the altitude by using the button over here, right? So if we currently look, you can see that the altitude has been set to 1600 feet. But let's assume that we're instructed to fly to 14,000, right? Because that could be, I would say, uh, the altitude which we're instructed to by the HC. So let's change it. In this case, what will happen, it, the aircraft can climb until it reaches the 14,000 feet and, by, and after that it will stop. That all depends on how you fly to that altitude because you can still do it manually but you can also use the indicated airspeed mode and the indicated airspeed mode will try to keep the speed as currently indicated over here right so what you will see that it will continuously change once you're uh, once we're airborne and it's automatically being sp uh, i would say updated because of this button that's the target speed mode if you set it to manual you will see it turns to blue and you can change the target speed mode using this nice button but for now, we will keep it as is for this tutorial. Then we've got the vertical speed mode. And the vertical speed mode allows you to set the climb or descent angle using this nice wheel. 
also known as the pitch wheel and that once enabled you will see a blue arrow over here which will mark the pitch you're flying until you meet the uh, until you hit the altitude and then we've got vnav mode and the vnav mode depends on the uh, beacons right so if you look at the beacons you'll sometimes see that there are altitude cross modes or different options where it will say okay hey you need to fly at a specific altitude uh, once you're at uh, waypoint number x and especially that's useful when i would say doing the approach because then you can already make sure that you're flying on a correct uh, altitude uh, I would say before hitting the, uh, before I would say capturing the glide scope, because in some cases you need to fly, for example, at 5,000 feet at a certain uh, waypoint. But in most cases, the HC will instruct you to do it, but then you are not descending fast enough. Well, the VNAV mode will help you with that. Although you can also use the VNAV mode to climb, as far as I understood. Then we've got the speed hold mode, and the speed hold mode, uh, as far as I figured out, it, really do it doesn't work yet, at least, but maybe that's me. I tried it multiple times, but there's no indicators, etc., uh, which show that it's enabled, and I also don't see the aircraft reacting to it. So, currently everything has been switched off, except the flight director, which is over here. Uh, so the flight director is there, so that's cool. So let's go airborne and let's try to see if we can get the autopilot working, right? So you can see aircraft ready. Uh, let's go inside the aircraft again, uh, reset the view, uh, remove the parking brakes and increase the speed to max mode. And we're taking off from runway 35. And what you will see is if we would look at this angle, you will see that that, uh, I would say, pink icon that's the uh, 120 mark and if we're airborne i will show you that it will adjust itself automatically right so we're almost at that 120 mark i'm gonna push back the stick a bit a little bit more airborne Gears up. And now we need to already start making that angle, right? Else we can't make it uh, to the uh, to the beacon which we defined. And then all of weird things will happen. In the meantime, you can still see that it's, I would say, uh, at the same speed, right? It still is at 120. But let's assume that we're now happy, right? So let's try to decrease the uh, climb angle a bit because else we're, let's say, going a little bit too slow. Let's assume that we want to set the direction into the uh, beacon. So we want to fly this direction. In that case, what we're gonna do is switch AP on, which said, hey, okay, hey, we're gonna switch in the autopilot and it says pitch hold. And a pitch hold simply means, hey, we're gonna make sure that we're climbing using a certain pitch and that's the pitch which we currently I'd say uh, did fly once enabling the autopilot. Now let's switch on that heading mode and you can see you will see that once we change or once we enable the heading mode sorry the aircraft will start turning and you will see a heading select mode over here. Keep in mind that it will start turning and it could do it very aggressively. So be careful because I once was in a situation where I enabled it and I simply crashed, overstressed the aircraft. Uh, so always be careful. Uh, also when using the pitch hold mode, keep an eye on the speed because the speed itself won't be taken into account. It will simply continue to fly that pitch. Let's switch to the vertical mode. And then you can see that it switched to VS mode. And then we can use this nice button over here to change the climb rate, right? And that's also what you see uh, over here. If I switch this button, you can see that it climbs now and will start climbing further. So you can see the climb rate over here. Cool, right? Now, while making small adjustments, right? Because we want to fly into this direction. So we need to fl make fly a little bit more to the right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to that IS mode. So if we're switching to IS mode, then that VS, which stands for, for vertical speed, 
will change to IS. And what will happen is that you will see that the aircraft will start dropping speed until it hits that 120 knots. It will do, do it, I would say, initially a little bit slow, uh, but it could be, I would say, very aggressive. As you can currently see, it's really slowing down really fast. But the advantage of using the IS mode is that if this value changes, it will also automatically adapt that new change and will start trying to fly that certain uh, or that indicated airspeed. So let's uh, show that, right? Because we're now slowing down to 120. Let me pull up the flaps, which will change it in this case to 150. And you can see that the aircraft directly starts to react because it start to increase to that 150 knots. And this yellow arrow shows how fast the aircraft is accelerating, right? So it's good now. So you will see it starts turning down, right? So that's good. So in the meantime, we're almost at park, right? You can see that I would say over here, we're 2.7 miles from park. So everything's good. So what we can do is we can still make some small adjustments, right? because we want to fly into the correct direction. So let's do that. And then once we, we pass park, we can do two things. One thing of course is continue to use this nice mode. In the meantime, we've been instructed. Are we instructed something? Let me see. Ten thousand. Ah, oh, see, we're a little bit. We need to fly, climb to seventeen thousand in this case. So let's do that first. Let's make sure we're climbing. We're flying in the correct direction. That's what we're doing. We're flying into the direction of EL four hundred. So let's change our uh, altitude to what was it? Seventeen thousand feet, right? So let's do that. And you can see the aircraft will simply continue to climb using that specific speed, right? Until we hit that uh, 17,000 feet, which was instructed a few minutes ago by the ATC. Now, let's assume that we, I would say, don't want to use the heading mode again, but simply want to use the uh, navigation mode. Well, we can do that. We simply press nav. And that will change the mode to LNAV. It needs to be green because green means active. And that's also what you can see here for the Alt Select mode. The Alt Select mode is currently not enabled because we're not flying on a specific altitude. No, we're in the progress of climbing to that specific altitude. So once we're at that specific altitude, it will start turning to green and we'll say Alt Star if I'm correct. So now it's, I would say, just a matter of time of climbing to this wave or climbing to this altitude and you will see that it will automatically fly to that waypoint on the course right you can also see it here it's 20 uh, nautical miles and we'll simply fly straight to that nice waypoint which we defined in our flight plan and then once we're there it will start flying to uh, EL uh, 500 right So that's good. So we've done that, right? So let's look at the VFR map. Which you can always use as I would say as a check. We're going good. And let's wait until we're at that uh, 17,000 feet to show you what happens with this one. So again, you can use all the functionalities including the approach and the back course. But those two will be discussed in a different video. Uh, the uh, speed hold mode for some reason doesn't work. I didn't figure out yet how to get it working. But if you figured out how to get it working, then please let me know. Because I can't imagine that it doesn't work. Uh, the VNAV mode, right? Uh, it works, but there are some known issues. If you look at the Asobo Fora, you will see that a lot of people report some issues. And there's now also, I'd say, a known issue list for this aircraft which will say, hey, it doesn't work for this one. In the meantime, you can see that it automatically has adjusted the speed again, and the aircraft will simply adjust. And that's one warning I want to make is once you're at that specific altitude, right? In this case, it's 17,000 feet. You need to control the engine power yourself because else it will start to take going faster, 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 and then eventually you go into overspeed 
And that's of course not what you want. So we're coming close, right? We're at 15,000. And here you hear that nice sound, right? That nice sound and that blinking yellow uh, marker means that we're, I'll say, thousand mile or thousand feet, sorry, from the uh, configured uh, altitude. That's simply for you to make a rem uh, remark or, or make the pilot aware that you're closer to that, I'd say, altitude which you predefined uh, using that altitude button over here. Now you will see if we're coming close, that it will change to Alt Star, right? Alt Select Mode. Which means that it now is active in Alt Select Mode, but will stop climbing at 17,000 feet because we programmed that. The other thing which you see is that it will start to climb or increase speed cr like crazy, right? So what you need to do is decrease the speed. But as you just heard, we need to climb further to, uh, what was it, 25, if I'm correct. Yeah, 25. So let's make that adjustment in that case. Keep in mind that it doesn't change uh, back to that uh, correct mode again, right? So it doesn't change back to the previous mode configured. So what you need to do is once you set up the altitude is hit that IS button again, and then it will start, I would say in this case, decrease speed <laughs> because it said, hey, we can't go faster than 164 and it will start climbing to that uh, one, 2000, uh, 25,000 uh, feet. Again, IS mode is active, Alt Select mode is deactivated until we're close to that 25,000 uh, feet. And here ends this video because, as I mentioned, I'm not going to show you the uh, approach mode and the backwards mode. I will do that, but I will do that in a future video. So, what will happen now if we would if I would start talking for a few minutes more, you will see that uh, once we're here, it directly starts turning to the correct waypoint. Keep in mind that in some cases you can't act activate the LNF mode. It will say, hey, I'm waiting for the uh, LNF mode to intercept the GPS channel. If that happens, then make sure that you're close to that, I would say, pink line over here and then try again, right? So you can simply press the button sometimes multiple times. It will go into roll hold mode, uh, but then make sure that you're pressing it again and then it will go to LNAV mode. Because if you're too far away from this line, it can't figure out, okay, which direction do I need to fly, which in other aircraft will simply prevent you from activating that mode. So what I do recommend, if you're too far away from this uh, pink line, then use the heading mode to make the adjustment so that you're coming close to this pink line. And then after that, activate the LNF, which stands for uh, lateral uh, navigation. In this case, you just saw that it blinked, right? It changed to EL500. And now see what happens. The aircraft simply flies to the next waypoint and I didn't do anything. Here ends this video. In this video, we looked at the basic steps how to manage the autopilot in this nice aircraft, the ATR, which I still love, right? I really love this aircraft. I really flew a lot already with it. Unfortunately, I didn't figure out how to use the speed hold mode. I was expecting to uh, uh, that it was an option which you could activate and it would keep that specific L, uh, speed. But for some reason that doesn't work. Still trying to figure that out. Maybe it has to do with the throttles which need to be in a certain position. But if I find out, I will definitely let you know. So keep an eye on my channel for new videos. If you would like to know when I'm posting new videos, make sure you're subscribing. And if you have questions or comments, then feel free to leave them in the comment box below this video. Again, here it ends. Hope you liked it. Until next time.